Ambition is not greed. Ambition is an eager desire to achieve, an eager desire to get ahead in life, to do more for your family, to prosper in health, wealth, and relationships. Ambition is a powerful force. The power of ambition turns hopeful wishes into reality. It leads you on the right course to the good life. Legitimate ambition says, I only want something at the service of others, not at the expense of others. If it is your ambition to be great, you must first find a way to do so by serving others. If it is your ambition to be wealthy, you must first learn how to give. If it is your ambition to be healthy, you must first learn to stop doing the things that can make you and others sick. Today, I will share with you, my friends, why ambition is at the core of every success. I encourage you to listen well and take notes on the information that is relevant to you. But remember, this is only the beginning. The insights you will learn from this program are seeds that have the capacity to lead to extraordinary achievement. My hope is that you will cultivate these ideas with your own imagination and creativity. Water them with your faith, intensify them with your activity, so that they will grow and bear fruit. I'm always intrigued with the challenge of trying to put into words the ideas that can make a difference in a person's life. And now I have the pleasure of sharing these ideas with you. Ambition is like a secret treasure for many people. Imagine it as a burning desire inside you, urging you to achieve something special. The dictionary describes it as a strong desire for distinction, power, or fame. But what does that really mean? Let's break it down. Now, think about the word eager. It's like when kids are super excited about their birthday parties. They can't wait to be the star of the show, receive lots of gifts, and eat way too much cake. Even grown-ups get eager about birthdays unless they feel a bit awkward about the number of candles on the cake surpassing their accomplishments. Being eager isn't just about birthdays, though. It's like when you're thrilled to watch a ball game, see your kids perform in a dance recital, catch up with an old friend, or shop for a shiny new car. Eager feels like a burst of joy and anticipation. The problem is, living a better life requires more than just wishes. We've all heard people say, I wish I could lose a few pounds, especially after a big meal. But to make that wish a reality, we need a strong desire to exercise and eat better. Likewise, some wish they had more money to ease their financial pressures. But wishing won't change much unless it turns into a genuine desire for change. If we truly desire change, we need to take action instead of just wishing things were different. True ambition requires discipline. It's about having that inner voice saying, if I want something tomorrow, I need to start working on it today. Ambition is a daily commitment, not just a fleeting wish. But living ambitiously isn't easy. While some seem to have everything go their way, others struggle to make ends meet. The difference lies in ambition. It's about having dreams and goals that pull us forward, even when faced with obstacles. Dreams are powerful. They drive us, helping us overcome challenges. But for dreams to be effective, they need to be clear and vivid. Like the settlers who dreamed of a better life out west, we need to envision our future success to keep pushing forward. Being a dreamer means seeing the finish line while running the race, or hearing the cheers during a tough project. It's about being willing to endure discomfort until it becomes comfort, because that's how we achieve our dreams. Ambition has always been vital, even from the early days of America. Pioneers crossed the country with dreams of a better life, while figures like Ben Franklin inspired self-improvement through hard work and diligence. In the end, ambition is what separates those who thrive from those who merely survive. It's about turning wishes into desires and desires into actions. And with ambition, anything is possible. Now, in addition to these witticisms, Ben Franklin gave us three principles of success and ambition that have withstood the test of time. Number one. 
Happiness doesn't come from big pieces of great success, but from small advantages hammered out day by day. What Mr. Franklin is saying here is that we must be happy with what we've got when we're in pursuit of what we want. Too often we say, oh, I'll be happy when I just get that promotion. I'll be happy when I just land that contract. I'll be happy when I just have more money. I'll be happy when I just, just what? You won't be any happier when you reach your goals than you are right now. It just doesn't work that way. Abraham Lincoln said it best. He said, you'll be as happy as you make up your mind to be right now, whether you're on your way, whether you've already gotten there, you'll be as happy as you make up your mind to be now, right now. Being happy on the way doesn't mean you can't aim for great things. After all, look at everything Franklin accomplished in his lifetime. It means that big achievements come one small advantage at a time. It means that you've got to enjoy the journey. It means that you must enjoy and take pride in your little accomplishments. It means enjoying who you are becoming in pursuit of your eager desire every day, every single day. Ben Franklin's second principle said that life is plastic. Within each of us is the power to mold ourselves and mold our environment. It is up to each of us to begin this molding process with a final product in mind, and it is within our power to work it and form it every minute, every day, every month, every year, by using your mind and your abilities and your attitude to work a little each day on molding your life, you'll soon see how magnificent your power is to gain those small advantages each day. The little steps it takes to build up to success. Principle number three, success is a pleasure. Success is a pleasure. If what you are doing today isn't satisfying, gratifying, guess what? You're really not successful. If you are not fulfilled with what you are doing today, you cannot possibly be successful. It doesn't matter how many worldly possessions you may have, how many cars, how many toys, how much money. If you're not happy with your life as it is, you cannot be successful. Success means different things to different people. For a school kid, it might be getting a top score on a test. For a homemaker, it could mean having a happy family and a well-managed household. And for a professional, it might be closing a big deal or achieving recognition for their work. But one common trait among successful people is that they're happy with who they are and what they're doing. They feel content and satisfied with their lives. Success brings them joy. Take a moment to think about what you've accomplished today that makes it a successful day for you. It could be anything, big or small. Writing it down helps you recognize the good things that happen each day. Over time, you'll start to see patterns emerging. Developing this habit can guide you towards greater success and happiness. In short, Mr. Franklin shared three principles of success and ambition. Number one, big achievements come one small advantage at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time. Number two, you have the power to mold your life, to make it whatever you want, to shape it and reshape it. And number three, success is measured through pleasure. This is the key one. Success is measured through pleasure. You've got to be happy along the way. You've got to learn to give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. You need to tell yourself, I'm proud of me today. You've got to be happy. You've got to learn to enjoy the process. These ideas are really just common sense. They're practical. And William James, a renowned American philosopher and psychologist, agreed. He founded a philosophy called pragmatism, which means being practical. It's about testing the validity of an idea by its practical results. Instead of just accepting something, you question it and judge its usefulness based on what it can do for you. One of the questions William James tackled was, what does it mean to be successful? After much thought, he described success as a combination of two things. Firstly, it's having an inner ideal and following it persistently with courage. This means setting a goal and having the determination to achieve it, no matter what. It's about promising yourself that you'll keep going until you've reached your goal, even if it takes a long time. Step by step, 
piece by piece. You keep going until you get there. Until is a powerful word. It means you'll never give up and you'll keep growing and learning along the way. Secondly, success involves outer achievement related to that ideal. While this is important, William James realized that the inner aspect is actually more crucial. As long as you're working towards your inner goal or dream, you have the potential for success. But if you give up on your inner vision, true success becomes impossible. Success is personal, and it's about taking small steps towards your goal for however long it takes. Let's take a moment to think about this. When you start achieving your goals step by step, you'll notice changes happening around you. Maybe they're small changes, things you might not even notice unless you're paying attention. For example, if you're used to staying up late and struggle to get up in the morning for work, try making a small change like going to bed half an hour earlier. Over time, you might find yourself waking up in a better mood, getting more done, and finding it easier to work with the people around you. It all starts with making one little change and building on it every day. You see, you can't change what's happening around you without first changing what's happening within you. When you start changing how you think, how you act, and how you treat others, life will start responding to you in a positive way. You can apply this to any part of your life, whether it's your career, your relationships, or your personal habits. Start by asking yourself, what small changes can I make today? Maybe it's as simple as smiling at someone in traffic, greeting your colleagues with enthusiasm, or spending quality time with your family instead of zoning out on the sofa. When you focus on making others happy and improving their day, you'll find that these small acts add up to something meaningful. And remember, you can't do it alone. Success is not a solo journey. Take the time to appreciate and thank the people who support you, whether it's your colleagues, your family, or your friends. A little gratitude goes a long way. So, as you work towards your goals, don't forget to show appreciation to those around you and go the extra mile for them. It's not just about achieving success. It's about building meaningful connections and making a positive impact on others along the way. Once you've made up your mind to set sail towards your goals, go for it with all your might and stay focused on your new course. Don't let worries about the challenges, obstacles, or negativity deter you. Ignore what others may say and keep your eyes fixed on your destination. Even when strong winds blow against you, if you stay committed to your path, they will ultimately propel you forward towards your dreams and aspirations. Your determination will carry you through the stormy weather. There are countless inspiring individuals whose experiences we can learn from today. People who have faced adversity and emerged victorious. They may be famous figures or ordinary individuals with extraordinary stories, perhaps even someone you know but haven't heard their tale. These are people who had a vision early on, pursued their ambitions relentlessly, and turned their dreams into reality. For instance, Consider the story of my friend's father. Despite being labeled as thrifty, he has a remarkable history that sheds light on his frugal habits. Raised in an orphanage after losing his father at a young age and being separated from his mother due to his behavior, he understood the value of seizing opportunities to avoid going hungry. Despite facing such adversity, he transformed his life from rags to riches solely through sheer determination and hard work. Starting as a vacuum cleaner salesman, he eventually pursued higher education, became a successful radiologist, and is now enjoying a fulfilling retirement, indulging in hobbies like fishing and riding his Harley. Stories of success surround us everywhere we look. Take the time to converse with these individuals or delve into their narratives. You might glean valuable insights and discover that they have already walked the path you are embarking on. When we think of Jesse Jackson, we often associate him with politics. However, 
Many of us are unaware of his earlier work with inner city youth in the ghettos. Before seeking votes on the streets, Jackson delivered a powerful message to these young people. I am somebody. His aim was to instill in them the belief that ambition is essential for being a good person. He emphasized the importance of striving to improve their lives and surroundings, as anything less would be a waste. Jackson recognized the significance of reaching out to America's youth before negative attitudes and habits became ingrained. His dedication to making a difference in the lives of disadvantaged young people is truly admirable. These principles taught by Jackson are equally applicable to each of us. When you wake up tomorrow and stand before the mirror, remind yourself that you are somebody, that you matter, and that you have the power to enact changes that will bring you closer to your ideal future. It's crucial to heed the words of motivational figures like Jackson as lasting motivation is accompanied by education. Many of these individuals have documented their journeys in books, sharing their stories and the lessons we can all learn from them. Imagine you're planning a short trip for the weekend to a place you've never been before. Wouldn't you seek advice from someone who has been there? You'd ask about the best route, safety tips, what to bring, places to explore, and potential pitfalls to avoid. Similarly in life, by listening to those who have traversed the path you aspire to take and learning from their successes and failures, you can enhance your own journey and make it more fulfilling. Listening to the stories of others can be motivating, captivating. They can provide that extra push you've been looking for. They can demonstrate what the power of ambition is truly all about. They've been there. Their knowledge is valuable. And when you use that knowledge and motivation to take action, you'll gain momentum. Eventually, you will find that the key to motivation, true motivation, is right there inside you. You won't have to look elsewhere to get pumped up, turned on, charged up. With the right knowledge behind you, you will learn how to motivate yourself. With the right knowledge, you will find yourself becoming inspired on your own, by your own learning, by your own discovering. You won't have to hope that somebody comes along to turn you on in the morning. They might not show up. You'll find that your journey of pursuit is the best alarm clock in the world. Joseph Epstein wrote a book called Ambition. In his book, Epstein defines ambition as the fuel of achievement. He says that everybody has a need for achievement, to do well, to get somewhere in life, to be better, to achieve achievement means moving forward. And in order to move forward, you must be motivated, inspired, ambitious. You must have dreams and goals that create ambition. Good ambition, positive ambition. Now, ambition does not mean being greedy. It does not mean being selfish. It does not mean getting ahead at the expense of others. Ambition is not greed. Ambition is not avarice. An all-consuming desire for wealth. Ambition is not hoping you can win at the expense of others. Do you suppose Judas was ambitious? He ended up with 30 pieces of silver, a fortune in those days. Was Judas successful because he had all that money? No. Judas sold out. Was Judas happy when it was all over with? No. The money didn't make him happy. What he did to get the money certainly didn't make him happy. What Judas became in the pursuit of his fortune caused him to end his own life. What drove him was not ambition. Ambition is not greed. Ambition is an eager desire to achieve, an eager desire to get ahead in life, to do more for your family, to prosper in health, wealth, and relationships. Now, desire does not always translate into ambition. Desire is what you want for yourself. A bigger house, a better car, a fatter bank account, a better life. I desire to have these things. Ambition is how you get there. Desire is sometimes healthy. Desire is sometimes unhealthy. Desire might say, I want the tallest building in town. The destructive side of desire might urge you to tear all of the other buildings down. I guess that's one way to do it. You might get away with tearing down the first one and maybe the second one. But in your desire to tear them all down, sooner or later, some guy is going to be standing out in front of his building saying, I'm on to you, get out of here. 
and pretty soon you're no longer known as a builder. You're known as a destroyer. Now, the second way to have the tallest building in town is to see it, dream it and plan it and put your team on it, work on it, go through all of the steps to get there, do it right, have the ambition to be the owner of the tallest building in town, and go through all of the right steps to get there. If you really want it and have the skills to do it and the patience to weather all of the storms, your ambition will lead you there. Having the ambition to do what it takes to get you where you want to go is good. Ambition is creative. And constructive ambition is an expression. It's something inside of you you want to express in a positive way. I'm sure you have dreams of accomplishing great things. Are you ambitious enough to realize these dreams? Are your dreams strong enough to pull you toward your future? Are they vivid enough to see the end result now? Are they worthy of doing until you get there? What are your reasons for creating these dreams? Reasons vary from person to person. I bet if you did a little soul searching, you could come up with a fairly strong list. The list of reasons why is it so important to achieve these dreams? What are you trying to express? These reasons for accomplishing great things are different for everybody. There are personal reasons, sometimes uniquely personal reasons. Some people do well for the recognition. Some people do well because of the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. And that is one of the best reasons. Once in a while I hear someone say, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. Hey, that's probably why the good Lord sees to it that he doesn't get his million, because he would just quit. Family is another reason, a motivator for doing well. Some people do extremely well because of other people, and that's a powerful reason. Sometimes we will do something for someone else that we would not do for ourselves. I know a lady who was getting back on track from financial disaster. Even though she didn't have much of anything left, her primary motivator was to keep her daughter in private school, an expensive one, one of the best in the country. Although her goal was to financially surpass where she was before her economic fall, her main reason to work all of those extra hours was to give her little girl the best possible education. As you can well imagine, wanting to do something for someone else led her to all sorts of other accomplishments as well. How fortunate are the people who find themselves greatly affected by someone else? It's powerful. What has you getting up early, hitting it hard all day, and staying up late? What has you inspired? What are your reasons for doing well? What's at the core of your quest? What is the power behind your ambition? Think about it, jot it down, do some soul searching. Define your reasons so they will work better for you. So now we have determined that it's in your best self-interest to be ambitious. Self-interest, self-preservation. As human beings, we can't help but be interested in our own self-preservation. We can't help but be self-interested. It's one of the strongest urges we have. Interested in our preservation, interested in our development, interested in our success. There's certainly nothing wrong with self-interest, but here's the catch. Self-interest must be enlightened as to what truly serves us best. Realizing that self-interest is acceptable was a huge relief for me. We're not talking about selfishness here. We're talking about self-interest, but not just any self-interest. It needs to be enlightened and educated. Self-interest should aim to benefit from serving others, not at their expense. When self-interest starts to harm others for personal gain, it veers into greed and evil territory. It's like saying, I win, you lose. This marks the beginning of a dark path in human nature. Enlightened self-interest, on the other hand, seeks to benefit while also serving others. Let me share a story my friend told me about a person she hears from every few months. This guy calls to ask for donations for food baskets for homeless families. My friend gladly donates because she herself was once homeless and understands their plight. She made sure the group he represents is legitimate. But after a couple more calls from the same guy, she started chatting with him about other things. It turns out he's in a tough spot himself. He's broke, 
living in a hotel, and searching for any construction or odd job he can find. However, what's remarkable about him is that he spends two or three hours every night calling people to raise money to feed the homeless from his hotel room. While many would suggest he use those hours to work more jobs, he believes it's crucial to help those in need despite his own struggles. He's grateful for having a roof over his head and enough to feed himself. Every time my friend talks to him, she notices he's making progress. He's paying off debts and starting to save money with plans to move into an apartment soon. Now recently, an interesting thing happened. My friend was talking with an associate of hers. She's single, lives in a big house, needs to find a handyman to help her out on a regular basis, someone who can build an addition onto her house. So my friend told her about this guy. The only reason this guy ended up being hired was that my friend's associate was touched by his dedication to service while he himself was down and out. Service, success at the service of others. Now this guy isn't rich by any stretch, but through my friend's network, he now has constant work doing things around several people's houses and now he's in a place of his own. And guess what he does every night? He's still making phone calls to get money to feed the homeless. What great character this man has. Enlightened self-interest leads to wealth. Self-preservation leads to poverty. Somebody says, well, I can't be concerned about other people. I have to pay attention to myself. Well, then you'll always have to. Somebody says, I can't be concerned about other people's bills. I've got enough worries trying to pay my own. Well, then you'll have to worry about them for the rest of your life. The best way to get that monkey off your back is to turn your attention around. Once I understood some of this stuff, I'm telling you, it revolutionized my whole life. Now, self-interest is okay, yes, but here's what self-interest must be. If you truly want to be happy, it must be enlightened. It says, don't keep your attention on yourself. If you want your life to work out, well, turn your attention to others. In your own self-interest, be enlightened. Truly act in your own self-interest by making an investment in service to others. Next, if you wish to receive, there's nothing wrong with wishing to receive. It's part of self-interest. But here's the enlightened part. If you wish to receive, you must give. Some people say, if you give, it's gone. No, no. Not if you're educated. If you're stupid, yes, it's gone. But if you're enlightened, chances are if you give, you've invested. And what do we expect an investment to do? Return. Get back what you put out? No. We expect it to return. Multiplied bigger, greater, better. My father taught me something valuable. Son, always do more than what you get paid for. Some might disagree with that saying it could disrupt the system. But I know they're mistaken. Following my father's advice has been beneficial for me. Why? Because doing more than you're paid for is an investment in your future. If you're aiming for a big promotion, you can't just ask for it and expect it to happen. You have to demonstrate your worth in your current role. Stand out by exceeding expectations. When opportunities arise, your boss will notice your efforts and be more inclined to consider you for advancement. Doing more than you're paid for isn't just about the present. It's about investing in your future success. It's one thing to make a sale. I'm telling you, if you make a sale, you'll make a living. If you go beyond making the sale and serve people by keeping in touch, calling them before they call you, writing a thank you note. Sales will lead to multiple sales. You can make a fortune if the customer is well taken care of. People who are well taken care of will open doors you can't get through by yourself. All of us have found ways to make a living. What got interesting for me early on was to figure out ways to make a fortune. You'd say, well, Mr. Rowan, how would I deserve to make a fortune? It's easy. Render fortunes of service. People will do things you cannot believe. For people who give them good service, here's one of the greatest gifts you can give anybody. The gift of attention. 
In return, they will do extraordinary things for your career, take you by the hand and lead you to more people than you could meet by yourself. Always do more than you get paid for. Next, in enlightened self-interest. Life responds to deserve, not need. Life was not designed to give us what we need. Life was designed to give us what we deserve, what we deserve. Once you understand that little life principle in your own self-interest, I'm telling you, it's life-changing. The ancient law does not go like this. If you can need, you will reap. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of people out there are hoping it works that way, but no, it doesn't. The ancient law goes like this. If you plant, you will reap. If you sow, you will reap. Someone might say, I really need to reap rewards. Well then, you really need to plant seeds in your own self-interest. Your self-interest must learn how to plant effectively so that everyone benefits, because life doesn't respond to mere need. You can't approach the soil and demand a crop by saying, I need it. The soil simply smiles and replies, don't bring me your need, bring me some seed, bring me effort, bring me discipline, bring me interest, bring me service. If you bring these things, I'll reward you multiplied by two times, five times, 10 times. You can't rely on need alone. You must come with seed. You must come with willingness. You must come with skills. You must be ready to learn, adapt, and grow. You must be willing to make an effort, even in challenging times, to remove obstacles and to nurture. That's the only way to receive a fruitful return. Once you grasp these principles, self-interest becomes an exhilarating challenge. It ensures that everyone emerges victorious. Enlightened self-interest ensures that everyone wins. If you want to discover, you must seek. And if you seek, you will find. To uncover, you must actively search. You must attend church. You must join seminars. You must visit the library. You've got to browse bookstores. You've got to enroll in classes. You've got to pursue knowledge. Why? Because if you seek, you will find. You'll discover ideas. You'll find inspiration. You'll find hope. You'll make connections. But you must actively engage in the search. You must be vigilant. Life reserves its treasures for those who earn it, not those who merely need it. Enlightened self-interest involves giving so that you may receive, seeking so that you may find, ensuring that everyone benefits. Enlightened self-interest requires education. It acknowledges that life is more than just the passage of time. It recognizes that life is a collection of experiences encompassing highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to take action. You must possess the discipline to act. Now here's what's important about discipline. One discipline affects another discipline. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and say this doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. Some things may matter more than others but everything matters. If you'd rather sleep in than go for a walk around the neighborhood, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather spend your money instead of saving it, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather put off a letter to an old friend instead of corresponding regularly, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather work late every night instead of going home and spending time with your family, pretty soon it will matter. It all matters. Every letdown affects the rest. If you won't walk around the block, you probably won't eat right, and you probably won't buy the books, and you probably won't attend the seminars, and you probably won't spend your money wisely. And after years of this, it all adds up. So the key to reversing this process is to start picking up the disciplines. It does matter. It all matters. Now here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest. Every new discipline makes a difference. That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action, the action that you won't think will matter. It all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. If you start walking around the block, 
it'll inspire you to start eating right. You start eating right, it'll inspire you to get a book. You get a book and it'll inspire you to get a journal. You get a journal and it'll inspire you to develop some skills. Disciplines affect each other. Lack affects the rest of your life. The key is to reduce this sense of lack. One of our biggest temptations is to slack off a little, to do just a bit less than our capabilities, to take a short break. Some might say, it'll only affect my sales. But no, it affects your mindset. It influences your beliefs. It impacts your family life. It affects everything. No, you can't afford to slack off. That's what vacations are for. When you're at work, focus on work. When you're on vacation, fully relax and enjoy the moment. If you're thinking about work during your vacation, you'll end up ruining it. So stay disciplined, be fully engaged, do whatever it takes to complete the task at hand, restore your health, improve your finances, sort out your family life, stay disciplined, practice discipline every day. When you establish habits that provide structure to your life, remarkable things can occur. They can multiply. And let me tell you, anyone who wants to drastically improve their income can do it. I was broke at 25 and a millionaire at 31. Everything around me remained the same. The change was within me. I refined my mindset. I read books. I attended classes. I started seeing life from a different perspective. I'm telling you, it works. Now, there are six principles of building ambition that we will discuss as we go through this program. These principles work together, creating and directing energy, directing your energy toward achievement, directing your energy toward self-expression. Right now, we'll touch on the six principles and definition only. And later in the program, we'll get into each one separately. Here they are, the six principles of building ambition. Positive self-direction, knowing who you are and where you wanna go, accumulating the knowledge and being prepared for opportunities that come your way. Self-reliance. Taking responsibility for your own life. Taking responsibility for whatever happens to you. Knowing that what's happening in your life is the direct result of your activity. Counting on you. Self-discipline. Ambition at the daily level. Knowing that you can reach your goals one step at a time, one day at a time, one activity at a time, and doing everything it takes to get there every day. Self-enterprise, consistently being able to create opportunity and consistently being able to take advantage of it. Being aware enough to see it, skilled enough to make it work for you. Working with others, we must make ourselves stronger to benefit us all. We must succeed at the service of others. Learning how to take your skills, enterprise, reliance and direction to the table to create true success. Self-appreciation. Appreciate your accomplishments. Appreciate your potential. Knowing that in one day you completed all you set out to do, fueling your ambition by fueling your appreciation of yourself. Each of these principles, when activated correctly, helps to develop your ambition, your eager desire to get more out of life, to gain wealth, to gain prosperity, to have a better family, to build a better business. All of these principles work together in creating and directing energy toward achievement and self-expression. All of these six principles are required to build the three cornerstones of a truly ambitious person, focused concentration, resilience, and integrity. You'll know you have unlocked the power of ambition when these three qualities, the cornerstones, become words that best describe you. So when we continue, we'll get started with principle number one, positive self-direction.